Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today in this video, we'll be looking into this paper that talks about enabling question answering on customer support tickets by using retrieval augmented generation or RAG with knowledge graphs. And this paper is from LinkedIn. So let's start off with the abstract. So they say that accurately retrieving past issues that are relevant is critical for efficiently resolving the customer queries. Now the problem with conventional rack system for these kind of problems is that they usually treat these tickets as plain text that more or less ignores all the intra and inter issue similarity, hence limiting us to getting suboptimal results. Now let's see to the example of what an intra or inter issue similarity or relationship looks like. So for example, if this is a ticket that says password reset issue, then there could be a little more descriptive version of it, right? That historically some user had written. So that can go as description, whether this can be fixed or not, that becomes another node. What are the next steps or the steps to kind of resolve it? That becomes another node. Maybe the priority of it becomes another node and so on and so forth. So that's essentially about calculating or segmenting out all the possible information or entities that can be extracted from one single ticket and creating nodes for it with proper relationships that make up the edges. So this is about intra ticket relationships. Now talking about inter, I think of one more ticket that says not able to reset password. So here it was password reset issue. Now it's not able to reset password. The titles are different. So let's say there are two separate nodes that exist for it, right? Because the ID will also be different. But you know, right? I mean, these and these are semantically similar. So based on if there is a notion in the system that says, okay, this is a clone of this, then that's an explicit relation that you can add between these two nodes with that edge. Else, you can have some implicit relationship by calculating the semantic similarity between the embedding of password reset and not able to reset the password. So that way you now are able to traverse in the entire issue space based on how the inter issue relationships are built. So these kinds of nuances or the granularity at which we can understand these issues is missing with the vanilla rag approach. Wherein as discussed, right, it's mostly about tracking tickets as plain text, ignoring the crucial intra issue and inter issue relationship, which limits the performance. Now their method constructs a knowledge graph. I mean, this is the example of a knowledge graph from historical issues for the retrieval part and retaining the intra issue structure and inter issue relations. So yeah, that's the exact example that we saw. On empirically evaluating it on benchmark datasets using metrics like relevance ranking, recall, NDCG for the retrieval part and then blue rouge for the generation part, they observed that their method was 77.6% better in MRR compared to the baseline. And for the generation piece, it was 0.32 points better in blue. And on pilot deployment, where they compared their system against the original way of manually looking through these issues, the median per issue resolution time reduced by 28.6%, which is a lot, by the way. So yeah, I mean, looks like the system is working and, and the intuition of treating issues as a knowledge graph first and then traversing a knowledge graph to get out the relevant subgraph kind of makes sense, the reasons that they have mentioned. Okay, so let's move forward and see what exactly are the relationships that they have considered and, and how are they constructed. So for question answering, as we know, right, the first step is the retrieval where you get in the relevant context on where you are kind of sure the answer may lie. And then is the generation piece that uses these retrieved context and gives out you the final answer for a question that you originally asked for. So talking about the knowledge graph construction piece. So for the intra issue tree that they create, each node is identified as a unique combination of the sections that belong to that ticket and that ticket title. And you can have R types of relations that define that relate these sections. And for inter issue, you define a graph where you have two kind of links. One is explicit link, then you have implicit link. Implicit is based on the semantic similarity between the tickets. And explicit is defined based on the platform. If there is any tracking or back reference that it holds, just like Stack or Flow or GitHub issues. If you ask any duplicate question, it says it was already answered in this one. You might want to check it out, or it's already discussed in this issue. So that kind of referencing, if it's if it's present, then surely that's an edge that you want to create between both these tickets. So let's see an example of what an intra or inter looks like. So this is a figure that summarizes the entire paper. 
Now for now we are talking about the knowledge graph construction phase wherein these are the tickets that you have. As said you can have two types of trees created one is intra ticket tree parsing the second is inter ticket tree parsing or connections. Now for intra let's take an example. So if this is one of the tickets that you have then these are all the information that you have extracted and indexed as nodes along with the relevant edges that hold that relationship. So for example if this is the ticket title then there must be some description right so it says has summary has description has fields has comments so if it has summary then what's the summary that you write it down over here if that's not mentioned then you just copy paste the title over here now talking of description description can be pretty long right so you parse out different parts of these description and index them separately you can have code snippets you can have how to reproduce the same issue you can have little more detail around the issue that the user has defined and so on and so forth you can have multiple layers of things that usually you see what occur in a particular description so you use llm to parse out these information using a yaml that you define way ahead what all information do you want to really extract from this description and then you put down the issue descriptions tips to reproduce if there was code then you would have also written a code snippet then these are the fields that by default you'll see in any issue tracking system or platform which will have priority the root cause the impact area i mean you might not have let's say the impact area but yeah more or less you'll find few other stuff that possibly you can index over here and if there are any comments that people are discussing about this issue then you can have that as another relation with with the node containing all these comments so with this i think you get an idea of what a intra ticket tree representation looks like right so with this now you have a wholesome understanding of what a ticket is and all its bits and pieces this ticket looks similar to some other ticket as well so that so that is where the inter ticket connections come in play so now if the system offers back referencing as discussed right i mean you can have this reference to this saying clone from and clone to a bidirectional connection over here if that's not the scenario then you can calculate the title level similarity between all the other nodes that are there and if it's above a certain threshold you mark it as similar to with a bidirectional relationship to increase the scope of answering any kind of question that comes in later on and for doing the similarity all the text based fields are vectorized and indexed in a vector database here they use quadrant which is again a vector database that's open source. I mean, they have both their versions. They have their on-premise version that you can host on your cloud. They also provide a centralized managed cloud service for which you'll have to pay some bucks. Okay, so that is about the graph creation piece. Let me see if I missed anything. Let me just quickly skim through the text. Okay, so I talked about they have a YAML template for extracting things. They're using Jira as an issue tracking platform. Okay, so yeah, one more thing. So they have two ways of how they parse information from description one is llm based another is rule based so things that are pretty explicit in terms of okay they have a certain pattern how you can extract them from large piece of text for example code snippets so based on certain grammar that they have written for, for the code prefix and suffix they sometimes you might extract things based on rules rest of the times it might go to the llm so they use a combination of rule plus llm to parse out this information so that embeddings model that they've used for the text rich sections is through bird and e5 model and the vector database is quadrant so yeah that was it about the graph construction piece which is the first step in the entire process now comes the second part which is retrieval and question answering now how are you even going to use this graph right so if somebody asks this question let's say how to reproduce the issue where user saw csv upload error in updating user email and has a major priority that was caused by the data issue so if this is something that user is looking answer for then they have essentially two steps that they apply for parsing these user queries the first is the intent detection step the second is the intent classification or intent generation step so the first thing that do is for extracting these entities and intents they use large language model 
and give out the similar YAML that they use to parse out the information from every ticket and ask it to extract, if possible, the values against each of these keys. Let's say summary or if there's a priority mention, if there's any root cause mention in the user query. And based on what it extracts, there are two types of ret The first step that happens is the embedding based retrieval which is what they call as EBR based ticket identification step. So here what they do is for each entity pair that that's there in the YAML file that they extract, they calculate the cosine similarity between the entity values and all the graph nodes that belong to the same section or the value of case or the node is about the same key or topic. For example, let's take a illustration to understand this. So this is a node that has been linked to another node with a summary as a edge and here you have the text for it and here you have let's say steps to reproduce let's say title for that matter and this is a dummy node or maybe it contains just the ID of the ticket or user query some UUID. Now here you have another ticket that contains another ID it has summary it has title and it has let's say priority as well. Now based on what you extract from user query let's say the priority comes out to be high and you have some summary you have some title. Now here K is priority summary and title and the values for it are high the actual text and the actual text so the first thing that you do is to filter your nodes and have some sense of what subgraphs you're really interested in based on the properties that can be filtered for example priority over here right so you select the nodes that have priority as high so let's say this is low and this was high so this is totally discarded and now this is the potential subgraph that you might be interested in then you further calculate the similarity between the summary that you extract from query and the summary that's mentioned over here. And think of a scenario where you don't have just a single ticket left, you have n number of tickets. So you calculate your query summary with all the summary nodes that are there across all the tickets where the priority was high. And the same stuff you do is with the title. So you'll get let's say 0.8 over here, 0.6 as a score. So the summation of it is 1.4, right? So that's the value that you now give it to the head node of this ticket, which is 1.4. And the same stuff is what you do with all the remaining nodes, wherever the filter criteria was met. And then you pick, let's say, certain top K tickets based on this cumulative leaf level scores that represent the entire ticket score. So this is how the retrieval is done for any question to come up with, okay, what all subgraphs are we really interested in? So the same stuff is mathematically written in this format for every key value pair that you extract and for every node in the tree for that node wherever we're talking about the section wherever we can calculate the similarity piece you take the embedding of the value which is what you have extracted from the query and the text that is mentioned in that node and you do it for all the nodes across all the key value pairs that you have okay now once this step is done now comes the piece of answer generation right so this is where they use Neo4j as their graph engine for the question answering piece. So if the query was how to reproduce the issue where the user saw CSV upload error in the updating email with the major priority due to data issue. Now the first tip that they do is for whatever top K tickets that they have extracted as a part of the scoring scheme, right? Each of them will have their ID. Let's say this is ID 1 till ID K. Now this query, which is marked in red, is reformulated to this one. It says how to reproduce and then the ID one, how to reproduce then ID two. So this way you have all the query reformulations created for one single query and each of them have different IDs where each ID is from each of these K IDs that you have extracted as a part of retrieval step. Now this how to reproduce is nothing but the intent. So you have an intent followed by the ID of the retrieved document. Now this is formulated in the form of graph language that Neo4j extracts and it says like, okay, we need to return the answer or the node value that is steps to reproduce. And once you have done this for all the K nodes, you get to the final answer by correlating answer and the query using a large language model. So you pass every step to reproduce and the original question and ask LLM whichever of them really fits in and tries to answer the query. So that is how the answer is generated and returned to the user. So in this case, everything was done. This was the final answer that was returned. Now, which is nothing but the text more or less that's there in steps to reproduce node. Okay. 
that's it for the paper then you have reference here so it's a short paper although i'm still confused on one piece which is how are we using the inter ticket connections in the retrieval or answer generation phase because nowhere it's mentioned to how it's being done as far as my understanding is concerned because the retrieval is based on similarity and filters so that's happening with all the nodes is what i understand but again that could have happened regardless of these connections that we have made right so how are these being used i'll have to brainstorm a bit on it or probably send out the questions to the authors to have a better understanding of the use of these inter ticket connections in the workflow that they have written okay so i think i'm done with this paper so yeah if you enjoyed this content hit the like button subscribe to the channel share it across with whosoever you think is interested in this i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care